Anton, haven't seen you since we were kids. Yeah, great to see you. What have you been up to, Ringo? Oh, not too much. In a few bands, you know, I was with the Beatles. Yeah, they were pretty popular, right? Yeah, they were. Married Barbara Bach. Oh, that's great. Yeah. What have great. you been up to? Um, well, I've been in, I've been in prison. Ah, well, I'll see you next time yeah. you didn't give us a call. All right, thanks. Anton, why didn't you tell him you were the drummer on the show? Oh, well, I was, uh, I was a bit ashamed. <laughs> Let's get to our viewer mail. Should we, should we drop one in the interest of time? We're okay? I would never do that to my audience. <laughs> viewer mail. I keep, every week I forget about the viewer mail theme. theme composed by Mr. Henry Mancini. But just because we paid for it, does that mean we have to use it every well, week? We promised him we'd play it. It's like cartoon playhouses next. <laughs> You don't like Mr. Mancini's No, I love the song. Composing? I just that I forget about it from week to week. you have something against Moon River? No, I don't have anything against anything. How do you anything. feel about the Pink Panther? I love them all. I see. Uh, viewer mail, ladies and gentlemen, uh, letter number one begins, Dear Dave, uh, you know those tiles on the ceiling of the Lincoln Tunnel. When do they fall? And when they do, who picks them up? And when they do, how do they do it with all those cars whizzing by? <laughs> <laughs> a couple of wondering watchers, Maria Jones and John Hillman, Utica, New York. Well, Maria, gosh, uh, and John, thank you very much for sending us this uh, wonderful Andy Rooney transcript. <laughs> I was supposed to hit the confetti, but it's such a mess out here already that I'm not going to miss it. Supposed to be confetti. Yeah. <laughs> General Noriega loaded the cannons again. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Thank you. Letter number two, dear Dave, is it true what I hear about you and Paul? Uh, you know what I mean. Confused. Uh, Gary Iacano, Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, uh, Mr. Iacano, uh, you know, please listen to me. I I it's true that the FBI has contacted me on several occasions concerning you and, and the entire Iacano family, but uh, uh, I, I told them nothing, as always. You know, I, I remain loyal, and Paul, on the other hand, has, has cut a deal with the government, and he plans to destroy the Iacano family in exchange for immunity. Dave, so I just wanted to get what? What the, what the hell are you doing? I'm sorry, Paul. I just had to clear the air. I'm sorry. I'm afraid your days as an informer are over. Well, thanks a lot, pal. I'll have to return the favor someday. All right, now, well, wait a minute, Paul. Where are you going? What are you doing with the suitcase? Where am I going with the suitcase? I'm getting in the first plane out of the country thanks to you. My life's not worth a damn. Oh, now, wait a minute, Paul. You're, 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 you're overreacting uh, as well as overacting. Ah. And, and <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure that Mr. Iacono will just give you a stern talking to and forget the whole thing. Yeah. Bat chance. Oh, now Paul Rose. Too bad. Watch out for the soccer ball. Uh, film coordinator Rick Sheckman. Rick, come on out here. Rick, nice job. Rick Sheckman, ladies and gentlemen. You know, you know what we needed there? We needed some, some footage of a guy getting into a car and getting blown up, and you came through and got the footage. Of course, it was old, and it was grainy, and it was obviously dated, and the guy looked nothing like Paul, but it worked in the piece, and uh, for your ongoing excellence as film coordinator, we're giving you cable television's highest honor, 
the coveted ACE Award. Congratulations. Nice job. Yes, nice job. Rick Sheffield, ladies and gentlemen. We have time for all of this? Really? I don't know. Uh, dear Mr. Letterman, number three begins, uh, what did Paul Schaefer and Biff Henderson do before you catapulted them to national prominence? Sincerely, Marcus Doyle, Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Well, Marcus, as most viewers know, Paul and Biff were doing pretty well right here at NBC long before we went on the air. Here, take a look at this. There you go. I think you get the idea of what we're discussing. There's Paul and uh, Biff. Dave, come on. We have done that dummy photo gag a thousand times. I feel it hurts the show to keep doing the same old crap yeah. week in and week out. Yeah, well, well, listen, Paul, maybe you feel a little bit differently about the dummied up photo gag when you see the dummied up headlines in the newspapers, all right? <laughs> you know, the fake headlines are, are even stupider than the dummy photo. You're taking a tired old joke and you're stretching it out even longer. Yeah, okay. Uh, excuse me, Paul. One more. Let's take a look at this last dummied up headline. Actually, I guess it was a pretty, pretty funny letter after all. On second thought. Sorry, a humorous letter. After all. I'm not going to do letter number four. Uh, letter number five. Is everyone in place for letter number five? <laughs> we're, we're calling an audible. It's letter number five. I've read the defense. I'm changing the play. Letter number five. Uh, dear Dave, I remember when your show first aired uh, back in the late 60s, Paul looked scared every time you asked him a question. Now it seems like you can't shut him up. Where did Paul get all this confidence? Just curious. Tim Stein, Shawnee, Kansas. Good question. Uh, Paul, where do you get that uh, wonderful, growing, glowing sense of confidence that you radiate? Well, I've acquired uh, a lot of inner peace, inner strength, if you will, yeah. from my hobby, raising and collecting butterflies. Oh, that's great. That's nice. And those are actually living butterflies you have in there, Paul? They, w they should be, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they would have been living if the AC had been on. Yes, they are. <laughs> Actual living butterflies, and you know, I, I love watching these beautiful, gentle, these beautiful and gentle creatures. Well, bang the cage once and see what happens. I can even... There, look at them jumping around. Sometimes it helps. <laughs> sometimes it helps if I sing to them a little. Uh huh. Bit. All right. Oh, little butterfly, you fly so high uh -huh. as you go by. Ah, uh, Paul collecting butterflies. What a sissy. What next? Paper dolls? Where do you take your butterflies? To the ballet? Why don't you show them the dance of the sugar plum fairy? Ha 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 ha! Go, my pretties. Kill! Kill! There's, there's your race award. Congratulations. I don't know. We'll, we'll be right back. Up in this half hour, what did you think of uh, Gene and Roger? They're nice, aren't they? They're lovely. They're interesting yeah. and uh, fascinating to, to listen to the way they kind of bicker among themselves. Friendly competition, yeah. I like right. to call it. Uh, from the uh, S.C. E. Johnson Raid Center for Insect Control, Keith Kennedy uh, will be here. And I, I guess we have some insects that we're going to uh, uh, demonstrate how these uh, various insecticides work. And uh, tomorrow on the program, actress uh, Catherine O'Hara. Ladies and gentlemen, Anton Kidd. Hi. Hi. Anton Fig, our drummer, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to see you, Anton. What brings you over here? Well, I was just over there playing the drums like I do every night, and um, I thought tonight I'd stop over and say hi. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
It's a very nice surprise. What have you been up to? Well, I've, I've been over there playing drums with a band most of the time. <laughs> and, uh, and what brings you here tonight? Well, I wanted to remind the people that I have something special coming up on NBC tomorrow night. Oh, really? What is that? Well, I'll be over there playing with Paul and the band. <laughs> well, that's good. We'll certainly look forward to that. Thanks. I hate to run, but I have to go. Anton's been acting rather strange lately, hasn't he? Must have been a miserable summer. Uh, tomorrow on the program, actress Catherine O'Hara. Uh, <laughs> oh, I just hope that wasn't Wendell. Uh, <laughs> no. What was that noise? Huh? Where did that come from? I think it was one of the compressors filling up. So. <laughs> Sorry. All right. And uh, musician Nancy Griffith. Uh, Huh? We'll be here tomorrow? Terrific, what yeah. kind of music, Nancy Griffin? Uh, lovely, melodic, uh, folk-oriented yeah. music. I, you know, I think all of Merv Griffin's kids have gone into business, the show business. <laughs> See another one? I think so. Uh, huh? Andy. Maybe it is Andy's kids, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um... I'd like to see him do one of those little reports on that Dan Rather boy, see what they come up with there. I'd like to see get him on that 60-minute show and work him over a little bit. That would be Find something. Find out what went haywire with this guy. Uh, and you know, as, as I was shaking Mike Wallace's hand, I noticed, I, I think he had fluffo on it. That yellow stuff. Uh, Phil Hartman from Saturday Night Live is just minutes away from being out here. Uh, also, famed TV art instructor Connie Gordon will be joining us. Paul, you remember those old westerns? This guy, I want to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, a member of our crew tonight made, uh, back in the 30s, over 200 westerns. And he's right over there operating the camera. Please say hello to our good friend, Johnny Pinto, ladies and gentlemen, right there. Johnny, take a bow. There he is, Johnny. Man alive. You know when you ride into Cheyenne there and kick ass all day? Those were great films, Johnny. Johnny Pinto. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Monday on the big program. Oh, it's a weekend. Did you know that, Paul? Now is oh, the yeah, weekend, this yes. reminder. Dave, yeah. don't come in tomorrow. No. Uh, Julia Roberts will be here. Michelle Schock will be here. And uh, also uh, author uh, Tom Baudet will be here. You know what it's time for right now? It's time once again to check in on that uh, lovable cartoon family, the Sampsons. Okay, everybody, it's time to take a drive. A drive will be very nice, won't it, children? No way! I hate drives! Well, Bert, you're going on this one. We can all forget about it, Dad. It's starting to rain! Oh, no. Anyway, sweetheart, kids, I love you. There it is. It was the Samson's. Uh... And I'm going to let you, in, let you in on another little secret. All of those voices were done by the same guy, our drummer, Anton Fig. <laughs> nice job, Anton. Man alive. Boy, that was fun. Johnny Pinto and the Apaches. Did you ever see that one, Paul? Johnny Pinto, one of my favorites, oh, Saturday afternoon in yeah, the movies. Yeah, yeah. very exciting yeah. stuff. Over with that. Uh, here we go. Tonight's top ten category, uh, Mrs. Hussein's top ten tips for keeping your husband happy. <laughs> it's just that big, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us on the program tonight. We have a lovely show, our old friend and uh, very talented man from the uh, television program Saturday Night Live, Mr. Phil Hartman. 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 Hey. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, the hardest working man in show business, the godfather of soul, James Brown. I 
you've had a little something to drink. <laughs> oh, stop it. Uh, oh, my God. Also on the program, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the most beautiful of them all, leggy supermodel Rachel Hunter. Now, say a little bit of Paul Schaefer is right over there. Thank you. My name is Phyllis. Nice to see you, David. Nice to see you. Thank you very much, boy. I was hoping a little bit for that hooray for Hollywood. Oh, you want to hear that? Just a little bit. <laughs> wow! Now we're enjoying ourselves, aren't we? Uh, yesterday I mentioned that it was the, the uh, St. Patrick's Day Parade. Did you get out there and take a look at that, Patrick? Well, it was raining so hard. Yeah, coming down in a deluge, but yet... The attendance at this year's uh, parade, I think, was bigger than ever. They Is had like right? uh, uh, six million people attended the parade. Six, six, billion. six million. Six people. million people. That's right. More people attended this parade than the Rose Parade and the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade combined. combined. It's, ladies and gentlemen, like I need to tell you, it's just that popular. Uh, so what we did, we had our own videotape crew out there. And they brought back some fascinating uh, images of the St. Patrick's Day Parade. And we put them together, and we're going to now show them to you in a little quiz form. Right. A little quiz. You can take it at home, take it right here if you want to jot something down. Play, play along, add up your score, and then phone me later and see how you did. <laughs> Do you have some music for us? Yes. Oh, Hennessy, Tennessee, Toodles, Zip, and the music is something grand. A pleasure to all Ireland is Mac the Mara's band. By gosh, you weren't kidding. You had music for that. I did have, yes. You know, dialect. I'm, I'm going to start coming to rehearsal. Uh. <laughs> A lot of good it'll do now. Uh, okay, here we go. It's our little St. Patrick's Day uh, quiz. Uh, take a look at this image right here. Every year, the woman on the left celebrates St. Patrick's Day by A, watching the parade with her daughter, B, uh, buying a souvenir shamrock, C, swallowing a potato whole. <laughs> Two, just two of the six million spectators at the parade yesterday. Now, these guys are thinking to themselves, A, I wish the rain would stop, B, the parade is slower this year, C, bitchin' bagpipes. <laughs> bitchin', bitchin' bagpipes. Uh, now, this man is a highly honored parade participant because, A, he's the mayor of Dublin, uh, B, he's president of the Hibernian Society, C, he's the inventor of the twist-off beer cap. <laughs> Uh, one of the highlights of this year's parade was A, the terrific turnout despite the bad weather, uh, B, people taking time to watch the parade during their lunch hour, C, C, this surprise appearance by the original cast of the Brady Bunch. There they are right there. Do you remember, remember the Brady Bunch? Sure. Let's see, we saw this, that's Karen, and then that's... That's Connie, and that's uh, Steve and Larry. Steve and Larry Brady. I don't remember it exactly that way, but whatever you say. Uh, this man, A, can't find his friend. B, <laughs> lost his umbrella. C, just ate a green hot dog. C. Yeah, I believe it was C. I think it's C. Okay, now these girls, uh, these girls are wearing A, plastic derbies, uh, B, parade souvenirs, C, the only Vatican-approved birth control device. No, not yet, not yet, no, 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 not yet, not yet. Now here we see a customized tuba, B, a decorated sousaphone, C, the Irish bat signal. This, this is pretty clever stuff, ain't it? <laughs> okay, throughout the parade, this man you're looking at here repeats to Daddy, himself... Daddy! Daddy! Oh, my God, it's, it's Daddy, that guy with the big drum. It's Daddy, I can't believe it! Daddy! Daddy! It's Daddy over there with a the big drum! It's Daddy! Daddy! 
Anton, I, I don't think it's your he's father. Got, he's got the I big know. drum. I know it's he has the big drum. Chances are it's not your father. <laughs> Looks so like it. Take a couple aspirin and relax. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> oh, no, wait a minute. <laughs> hey, a fine performance. Nice going, Anton. Thank you. Very good. Tonight in the role of orphan drummer Anton Fidler. Stop it. Hey, hey. Uh, get a court order and slap it on you people so fast it'll make you. Throughout the uh, parade, this man repeats to himself A, I'm proud to be Irish. B, remember to smile. C, keeps on going and going and going. These magnificent animals are A, Irish wolfhounds, B, Norwegian elk hounds, C, New York City rats. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something. They do, they do bear a resemblance to New York City rats, except, except they would be smaller. Yes. <laughs> Uh, these magna... Oh, I just did that one. Uh, this old-timer is telling his friend about A, his memories of old Dublin, uh, B, the first time he kissed the Blarney Stone, C, the time he killed a leprechaun with a rake. <laughs> Daddy! Daddy! <laughs> this man is annoyed by A, the rain, B, the delay, C, the two mice up his nose. The uh, three words that best describe this scene are A, Aaron go bra, B, long live Ireland, C, too much Novocaine. <laughs> Dad, Daddy? Uh, these men could be heard chanting A, we love parades, B, happy St. Patrick's Day, C, we're here, we're queer, get used to it. <laughs> And finally, oh, Paul, get ready. Get ready to play us off here in like a big uh, triumphant thing there. Uh, the reason everyone's following this woman is A, she's the drum major. B, she's the band leader. C, gravitational pull. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to uh, do a commercial, and when we come back, our old friend Phil Hartman will join us. Nice to have you here tonight.